Do you ever click on an article and then immediately regret it? That's what I did today. I'm just gonna go into this article. I usually don't read like garbage freaking articles like this uh, on these websites I've never even heard of, like Digital Spy. Uh, anyway, the title of this article is called Sorry Star Wars Theorists, These Last Jedi Revelations Are Here to Stay. Enough with the crazy Ray retcons, please. This article is by Hugh Armitage. See him right here? Big old goofy grin. He must have had a soy power shake today, so he wrote this uh, article. Another day, another theory about Star Wars. The Last Jedi tricked us, and Ray really is the daughter of Luke, Han, Leia, Chewbacca. Delete as appropriate. After J.J. Abrams went full mystery box on The Force Awakens, certain fans were consumed by the questions of... No, not certain fans. Uh, all of the fans were consumed by questions of Rey's parentage and the identity of Supreme Leader Snoke. As the theories grew more and more complicated, it didn't take a genius to guess that The Last Jedi would have neither the time, scope, nor inclination for such narrative acrobats. Um... I'm pretty sure I could have written a movie that uh, answered all the questions that were set up in Episode 7, you know, and not uh, made a complete fool out of the hero of the original trilogy. So, now Episode 9 might take a dive into the secret history of Snoke, though we seriously doubt it, but there's no way that it will reveal that Ray's parents really weren't n newbie. oh, <laughs> nobody's all along. Sorry about that, but there are some pretty damn good reasons why you just have to live with it. We're going to take all these reasons and break them down and uh, trash them, because that's that's what this article is. This is a perfect example of a uh, shell article for Lucasfilm. This is what people outside of the fandom menace think about us. His first reason says it makes perfect sense. The best explanation for Ray's parents being no more than filthy junk traders who sold their daughter for booze comes from The Last Jedi director Ryan Johnson himself. Having worked through all the possible parental permutations, he decided that the revelation that her parents were nobody best reflected the legendary I Am Your Father reveal from The Empire Strikes Back. Another movie that didn't get a wholly warm reception. They love to use that argument. But uh, yeah, it, it is one of the best Star Wars movies ever. And uh, it was a good story back then too. The Last Jedi is not a good story and, and it never will be. I guess if you want to go completely opposite of a good story and reflect a bad story, that, that was the way to go. That was the hardest possible thing that Luke and hence the audience could hear at that moment. Johnson told the umpire podcast. On the other hand, revealing that Rey is uh, related to the legendary Skywalker clan could be the easiest thing she could possibly hear. The hardest thing to hear is, nope, this isn't gonna define you. And he's right. Any other reveal would have been wish fulfillment for Rey and the audience. They don't want to give us what we wish for, but possibly not the best piece of storytelling and admit it. You didn't want The Last Jedi's big reveal turning out like that, did you? Rey is Obi-Wan's granddaughter theorist. Um, yeah, sure. Sure I did. Yeah. That would have been cool, you know. Ray, Ray uh, Kenobi. That would have been, that would have been nice. By the way, this doesn't make perfect sense. In The Force Awakens, whenever it showed her as a little girl, uh, right directly after being sold, uh, they flew off in like a silver or gold, sleek, nice looking ship. I don't think boozers that have to sell their daughter to a slaver to get alcohol would would have money for a ship like that so I mean I don't know why why they're saying it makes perfect sense there's that one down let's go to the next one. Oh, there's another paragraph it also addresses what was arguably a flaw in the first trilogy we know the Luke is Darth Vader son reveal is part of pop culture canon 40 years on but it changes the way young fans can identify with a moisture farming turned Jedi in a new hope he was a young man frustrated by his boring home life and dreaming of an adventure relatable but how many of us can claim that our dad is evil space Jesus? Gee, what? It's evil, wait. But how many of us can claim that our dad is evil space Jesus? Evil space Jesus. Uh, Mr. Armitage, do you know who Jesus is? Quality writing here. The Last Jedi affirms Rey as a role model. <laughs> oh god. The Last Jedi affirms Rey as a role model that a new generation can keep. Someone who is awesome on, on the, her, their own merits. Uh, okay, Rey is awesome on her own merits. What exactly is her own merits? Is it that she 
wasn't trained in the ways of the Force. She never went through any kind of struggle or conflict. She just won everything. So she's a role model? Like, how does that make sense? It doesn't. There's that... There's another one down. Number two, the Skywalker saga is ending. Here's our man right there. That's a hero. That's a that's a hero right there. There's a role model for you. He actually had to go through stuff and he came out on top. When StarWars.com made the official cast announcement for Episode 9, it was billed as the final installment of the Star Wars saga. Or of the Skywalker saga. Han and Luke are dead, though admittedly only from a certain point of view. In the latter case, and Carrie Fisher isn't around to play Leia anymore. Kylo Ren's survival odds are harder to predict right now, but as Luke's Last Jedi arc was partly about how he can redeem Ben Solo, and that's okay, a return to the light side is uncertain at best. Chuck Kylo down a shaft in the final act in the Skywalker saga really will be over. Unless Rey was revealed to be a Skywalker too, we don't know whether Daisy Ridley will be sticking around the Star Wars universe after the, this trilogy or not but either way the revelation that she is part of the family too would be a peculiar way to wrap up their story why would that be a peculiar way to wrap up the story the writer of this article is apparently under the same thought process of uh, Lucasfilm right now that everybody has to die for the story to be over not everybody has to die not every character has to uh, suck boob milk and die at the end of the movie for a story to be to be wrapped up i mean look at look at any movie look at any franchise out there does the main character die is it always like logan no this makes no sense either the skywalker saga is ending is not a defense of the last jedi i'm sorry is this article still going on god ryan johnson is still working on star wars amidst all the petitions to remake the last jedi to incorporate angry fanboy demands. There they go again, calling us names still. It's, uh, what is it, August 17th right now. Fanboy demands uh, the vain hope that it will be revealed as all a dream. Seriously, guys? Some people seem to have forgotten the one important detail. Johnson is still working with Lucasfilm. Uh, it wasn't a dream, it was a nightmare, but maybe that's, it was a dream to some people. Um, we don't know if Johnson's still working with Lucasfilm for his trilogy. It was basically just Kathleen Kennedy saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll be, like he'll have his own trilogy." It's kind of like the same thing with the Solo movie. They were they just kind of threw out that uh, Solo is going to be a trilogy, and then it bombed, and they're like, "Ah, nah, it's all right," <laughs> you know. So now imagine Lucasfilm Ka President Kathleen Kennedy calling him into her office. Hi Ryan, The Last Jedi took 1.3 billion and has 91% on Rotten Tomatoes, but some fans want Rey to be a clone of the Emperor, so Episode 8 is going to, or Episode 9 is going to contradict your movie completely. Hope that's okay. Now back to work with you. K thanks bye. K thanks bye. I don't know why I'm even reading this article and putting this on my channel. Um, I'm sorry if you're watching this right now. <laughs> Disney and Lucasfilm committed to the plot of The Last Jedi before it was released. To try to undo it would be both a sign of weakness and disrespect towards someone they are still working very closely with. You don't know that, dude! <laughs> the film was a huge hit. No, it wasn't, and we've no doubt they'll stick to their guns. Let's just look at this statement here. Disney and Lucasfilm. He's saying Disney and Lucasfilm would look weak and disrespect Ryan Johnson if they fix the franchise basically they would look great to us real fans they would look awesome and we would be excited and we'd go see the movie and go see all their other movies that they put out and nobody gives a shit what Ryan Johnson so if their main goal is money right now uh, this would be this would be the best move that they could make and it's starting to look like that because we really haven't heard anything from Kathleen Kennedy or Lucasfilm about any new movies. All we heard was Kenobi is canceled because apparently that's a thing that they do now is um, start projects or say they're going to start projects and then just cancel it. And then four, I'm sure he had fun writing this one. Bonus, Snoke isn't coming back to life. Okay, so maybe you're stuck with Ray's junk trader parents, but the least they can do is reveal that the oh so mysterious Snoke who was killed before he even got a chance to deliver a lengthy monologue about his secret origin, wasn't really killed by the treacherous Kylo Ren. Apart from the fact that everyone seemed okay with not knowing where Emperor Palpatine came from until the prequels, and remember how well those turned out, the prequels were fun, right? How about that? I'm a real Star Wars fan, and I, I, I like the prequels, so... 
I think it's funny how these people pick one thing that they think that all fans agree on that the, the prequels sucked and they use it over and over again to try to gain uh, common ground with us but it, that's not true either there were a lot of good things that came out of the prequels they're part of Star Wars they're part of the real Star Wars it doesn't take a genius to see it. again he, he used the same phrase over again who the hell is this guy? <laughs> back to this Amber Palpatine thing they also compare uh, Snoke to Emperor Palpatine. Okay, here's how the character archetype differs from Snoke to Emperor Palpatine. In the original trilogy, the Empire was already set up. It was already an established galactic presence, right? It was already like a huge government, overarching government. And of course, the government needs a leader, right? So, of course, there's going to be a leader there. So, if there has to be a leader of a government, then... Emperor Palpatine just makes sense. You just accept it. Uh, Snoke, on the other hand, so after the Emperor, Emperor and the Empire falls, the Republic takes power back, right? And there's a period of peace. Where does this freaking guy come from? From the outer limits of the of the freaking uh, galaxy, this mysterious figure comes and starts a First Order, and somehow is a threat again. And now the rebellion is the resistance again it just doesn't make any sense i'll tell you from a star wars fan's perspective we wanted to know who the hell snoke was where did he come from why is he so old and why why was he there before the empire fell and then just comes and shows up and appears and takes all this power so that's the difference like there's already a set empire that we accepted in the first movie because that's where the story began that's where it was and then we just have to accept that this mysterious force user where did this guy come from right and uh they just kill him off without answering it because because ryan johnson <laughs> i really love the people that use that phrase it doesn't take a genius to see that the first film saw him trying to live up to darth vader's example and prove himself the second was a struggle between light and dark now he's embraced his own evil way but he hasn't embraced his evil way he killed the bad guy and he didn't kill his mother i don't even know if this guy watched the film <laughs> I don't know if he just read a synopsis of the film or something. There's no real place for Snoke in this at all. His role is over. And even if he is really Darth Plagueis or whoever, it really doesn't matter anymore. Time to move on. Yeah, it does. It's a plot hole and it still matters. And I hope that they explain it in episode nine. So here's just another show article. Another uh, article of many calling, calling real Star Wars fans names again. Uh, calling us stupid. Calling us angry fanboys <laughs> we just went through this article together and took it apart and with logic because it doesn't take a genius to say that this article is freaking garbage someone that's not a star wars fan probably never saw a star wars movie before before the force awakens before they had to to write a a show article for that if you have anything else to add to the conversation go ahead and comment that down below uh, subscribe for more videos like this and i will see you next time